G'day Virtual Pilots, it's Requiem. In this video we're going to have a look at how do you recover back to the carrier under Case 1 conditions after you perform the flight. So for a Case 1 arrival, uh, we can expect the visibility to be greater than 5 second miles and the visibility greater than 3000 feet. As we approach the carrier, there's a 50 nautical mile radius around it called the carrier control area. And before we cross this boundary, we need to call inbound, and this radio call is going to include our call sign, position, altitude, and fuel state. And in return, the control is going to tell us the local weather, which will determine the recovery type of case 1, 2, or 3, which they'll let us know what's going on. And they'll tell us the BRC, which is the carrier's heading, and you'll need to take note of this for later use. As we get closer to the carrier, we approach a 10 nautical mile point. This is when we'd report the carrier's in sight, and then we're visual with it. And then once we get inside 5 nautical miles, this is where I'm going to join the overhead holding pattern. And so now we go into the cockpit and look at it in more detail. Alright, so we're going to be established here at uh, 350 knots at 20,000 feet. Um, so first step I'm going to do to make things a little easier is get the autopilot on. So I'm going to click the autopilot button here. And then I'm going to do a barometric altitude hold. That's going to hold 20,000 feet for us. So we're going to get back to the carrier. We need to use the right frequency. So we just double check, that's going to be the carrier's frequency there. We're also going to tune the tack end for the carrier, which is going to be 71 X-ray. It's colonized. Hit enter, and we can turn it on. Then we press push button 5 to turn on the tack end data. And I'm going to turn the moving map off to make it easier to see. And that's the data block of the tack end, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Now by doing this, we've created the steering marker on the HUD, which we can follow manually to get to the carrier if we want. Um, I'm going to use the autopilot function, and we're going to couple it. This way, we can automatically fly the course required to get us to the carrier. Alright, so looking down at the data block for the TACAN, first row is going to be your bearing and the range to the TACAN. Then you've got the time remaining until you reach it, the three letter identifier, the fuel remaining when you reach the TACAN, and the distance at which you need to begin a descent from the TACAN at 250 knots with 10 degrees nose down pitch and idle thrust. So the scale is currently at 40 miles, so we'll click the push button there to change it down to 10 miles. And we're approaching the carrier control area, so we'll look at how to do the descent flow now. Alright, so as we approach this 50 miles, it's going to be our trigger to call inbound. Marshall, zero, one, one. Marking mops 312450, angels 20.5, holding hands with 016, low state 8.4. 011, mother's weather is visibility 10 plus mile. Scattered clouds at 8000, altimeter is 29093. Case 1 recovery expected BRC 353, report see me at 10. Zero, one, one. All right, so hook bypass is going to be in carrier, any skids going to be off, master arm is going to be off, we'll be in the navigation master mode, and the left EDI will set to the HUD page. Um, com one's already set, tack end's already set, the ILS is channel 11, so we'll turn that on, and press push button number 4 there. The right DDI kind of do what you want with it. I'm just going to throw it up on the checklist page for now. The altimeter setting was 2993. Set that, put the hook down. Now for the radar altimeter, there's a couple of settings we're going to do. First one is we're going to set the actual radar altimeter 360 feet. And then we're going to use the aircraft data page. And see down the bottom here, your warning altitudes. This is an oral alert. So we'll click the push button for radar. Then we'll set that to 450 feet. So the 450 feet is an indication you're halfway through your base to final turn. So that's set. And the 360 feet is used for the actual chiming when you're rolling out on final. Now any ice is not required. Defog to high. And the windshield is not required either. Now if you recall from the tack end data block, there was that distance um, from the tack end you need to begin descending at in order to arrive over the tack end. Um, this will give you an altitude of about 6,000 feet. So that's not really going to work for what we need to do. At the lowest, we'll need to arrive 10 nautical miles prior from the tack end at 2,000 feet. So we need to begin our descent a little bit earlier. 
So if you're assuming you're going to finish at 2,000 feet, I like to add 15 nautical miles to that number. So in this case, 15 plus 15 is 30. So I'm going to begin my descent at about 30 nautical miles at 250 knots and a 10 degrees nose down pitch and speed brake that's required. So you notice that as I'm approaching that 30 miles, I've already started reducing my power. Um, the aim is going to be to arrive at 250 knots at about 30 miles, so I can just pitch it down and then we'll start the descent. So right now we're still coupled with the tack end in terms of altitude and the course. So we're going to turn the autopilot off and we're going to push the nose over. We'll be at idle thrust. Get yourself down to 10 degrees, nose down, and use the speed rack as required. Now, the amount of speed brake you're going to need is going to be dependent on, you know, what you've got on the airframe. Uh, you might be more draggy in some configurations compared to others. So you may have to retract and extend the speed brake a little bit um, just to ensure that you're going to maintain that 250 knots during the descent. So as long as we maintain this profile, we're not going to have any problems um, attaining our goal of being 2,000 feet above the ground, more than 10 nautical miles away from the carrier. However, if you want to make sure that uh, you are on track to meet this requirement, then we can have a look at the tack end data block to verify it. So looking down here, we're going to look at the range from the tack end, and then we'll compare it to the distance required until we need to start descending. And as long as that value is greater than 15 nautical miles, then you're going to be on target to meet that 2,000 feet at 10 miles from the carrier. So now I'm going to speed up time until we get to the next point of the descent to talk about. All right, we're coming up on 8,000 feet on profile and our descent and have the carrier in sight up ahead. So we don't really need to have the steering marker up anymore if you don't want. And instead, I'm going to use point three represented by the tack ends course, which is going to be 353 minus 90, which is 263. This just gives us a visual representation of where point three is. You can, of course, look out left of the carrier, that's what you would like to do. It's just an optional step that can help increase your situational awareness just a little bit. Now, if you recall from the aircraft data page, we had the radar warning altitudes of 5,000 feet and 450. So as we cross each of these altitudes, we get an oral alert. Altitude. Altitude. In this case, for 5,000 feet, it's our cue to switch the alt switch to radar, so it's displayed on the HUD. Coming up on five miles out now, still got about 2,000 feet to go. Um, so the technique to recover from a descent is going to be using 10% of your vertical speed and adding it to the altitude you want to stop at. So we want to stop at 2,000 feet and we're doing about 4,000 feet a minute. So we're going to initiate our recovery at 2,400 feet. So we start bringing the nose up, adding the power back in. Just timing it so we'll finish it off at 250 knots, 2,000 feet. And to make things easier, we can engage the automatic throttle control and then use the altitude hold again for the autopilot. So now we'll look at how to enter the hold. Okay, so as you're approaching here, we're going to be doing this hold within 5 nautical miles of the carrier and we're established at 2,000 feet AGL. And with multiple flights in the hold, they're going to be staggered by 1,000 feet. And you want your altitude established by 10 DME. There's four points around the carrier. The first one here at the 9 o'clock position from the carrier is called point 3. This will be 5 DME maximum. And as you continue coming down through point 3, we'll hit point 4. And if you're flying a perfect circle, this point's going to be at around 3.5 DME. But as long as you stay within 5 miles, you're fine. And continuing through towards the carrier, you're going to fly just overhead the carrier. This will be point number 1. And then between point one and point three on the upwind side, this is where you would initiate any climbs if you needed to do so. Then continuing from point one towards point two, and again, if you're flying a perfect circle, point two will be about three and a half DME as well. Now, if you're flying in the hold with multiple aircraft, you're going to sequence your flying for the best efficiency, which means that two flights will be 180 degrees apart, three flights at 120 degrees, and four flights will be 90 degrees apart. Now as we approach 10 nautical miles, um, we need to bring up the communications menu and we'll tell the carrier that we can see them at 10 miles. Zero one one. See you at 10. Update 
Now in order to make the turn that we need to, in order to be inside the 5 miles from the carrier, we need to lead the turn a little bit. So looking at our ground speed, it's 280 knots. So we'll take 1% of that and we'll add it onto the 5 nautical miles to give us 7.8 nautical miles. And this is going to be the earliest distance at which you're going to initiate your turn. So the cool thing is we have the automatic throttle control on maintaining our speed and the autopilot maintaining our altitude. So all we need to do is bank the airplane. So there's our 7.8 miles. We just bank the airplane to whatever bank angle you want. Anywhere up to 30 degrees will work just fine. Now the heading you want to finish on is going to be about 90 degrees off 0.3. So in this case, 263 minus 90 is going to be heading of uh, 173. So we keep this turn coming, and then once we reach heading of our 173, we just level the airplane off. And we'll maintain the heading until we cross the course that indicates 0.3. So here we come up on 173, bring the airplane level. And as we approach 5 miles, the pilot's going to do his next check-in. Tower, 011. Overhead Angels, 2. Holding hands with 016. Low state, 7.7. .7. So we're definitely inside 5 miles, and we're coming up on the course line here for 0.3. Now if you didn't have this course line on, uh, you'd have to rely on the tack and bearing pointer. So once that passes your 9 o'clock position, you'll initiate a turn towards the carrier. And this is just going to be a basic turns around a point. So on downwinds with a high ground speed, you're going to need more bank angle. And on upwinds at lower ground speeds, you need lower bank angle. So right now, our weight is 36,500 pounds. This is three and a half thousand pounds above our unrestricted landing weight. So we subtract three and a half thousand pounds from our current fuel and set it for a bingo, which in this case is going to be about six thousand pounds. And we're going to use the fuel dump switch. By setting the bingo, um, when we use the fuel dump switch, we don't have to monitor um, our fuel state because once bingo is reached, it's going to chime us with the caution and the fuel dump switch is automatically going to turn off. So this is a pretty handy feature to have you need to get down to your landing weight. The maximum landing weight on the Hornet is going to be 34,000 um, pounds, but that comes with some restrictions, so it's easy just to get it below 33,000 pounds and not have to worry about all that other stuff. Now as we continue the turn, remember that we're on the downwind side between points 3 and 1. Uh, this means that we'd be initiating any descents if we had to around here, and then once we get on the upwind side, that's when we would initiate any climbs if we had to accommodate any aircraft coming in underneath us. And speaking of aircraft underneath us, there's that flight of four of our teams that are landing ahead of us. So when you're making this turn around the carrier, um, you do need to adjust it a little bit. It's never going to be a perfect circle. You're going to be making adjustments to your flight path to you know change your time of flight um, because your ideal scenario is arriving before point three with the Charlie signal, which lets them know that um, you're cleared to come in and land. Although in the majority of case one operations in real life, um, there's not really much radio communication done. The pilots are able to do it on their own, just watching and timing it themselves. So we've passed over point one past the carrier, and uh, we're heading towards point two. And remember, this is the area on the upwind side when we can initiate any climbs if we needed to accommodate aircraft coming in underneath us. And since we're at 2,000 feet, this is the lowest point in the holding pattern. And if other flights were in this hole, they could be above us, stacked by 1,000 feet each. So as one aircraft leaves the bottom of the stack to make its approach, all the other aircraft will vacate their altitudes and drop down by 1,000 feet each. And the process continues until everyone's recovered. Now the last F-18 is about to land. And then once he does that, the carrier is going to give us a Charlie signal which lets us know that we're cleared to exit a point three and begin our own approach to the carrier. Zero one one, power Roger, BRC three five three, say Lewis Charlie. Zero one one. So you hear that magic word? It means you can exit the hold. So as you fly to point three, um, use a heading that's 210 degrees off relative to BRC. So in this case, the BRC was 353, so our heading outbound is going to be 203. Then you'll initiate a descent, get down to 800 feet, 350 knots, and you want to stay within 10 nautical miles DME of the carrier. 
and your end goal after this turn is going to be three miles to the back of the ship and paralleling BRC. This way you can pass on the starboard side of the ship at 350 knots, 800 feet AGL. So now we have our clearance, we're going to get ready to roll out on our heading of 203 to exit, as well as setting the BRC of 353. So as our heading, we'll roll it out, we'll accelerate to 350 knots. We've passed the 39 line of the carrier, so we're past point 3. So we can disconnect the throttle control and the autopilot and pitch down. Alright, so the bingo's gone off, which means the fuel dump switch is turned off and we've reached our desired landing weight. So we can turn off the caution and we'll continue the turn, maintaining 350 knots, getting down to 800 feet above the water. Now because you're flying faster, your turn radius is going to be larger, so you want to remember to stay within 10 nautical miles. And if you're having trouble figuring out what heading to fly of point 3, um, you'll take the reciprocal of BRC and then you add 30 degrees to it. So in this case, the BRC was 353. So the reciprocal of that's going to be 173. And adding 30 degrees is going to bring you out to 203. Your goal during this turn is going to be to finish it by 3 nautical miles DME, wings level, 800 feet, and 350 knots. So during this turn, you're pretty much you know, looking and checking at the carrier throughout it. Because you want to end up on the uh, starboard side of the ship, paralleling that BRC. There's not much of a hard and fast rule making this turn, it's just you're doing whatever's required in order to arrive at the desired points. That'll complete the uh, case one arrival and holding. Um, next video is going to cover the actual approach itself. Uh, this one was a little bit longer, so that's why I want to cut it short. Till next time, though, remember to fly safe and check your six.